So were all those space-based observations still not enough? And do we really need extra observations from Earth as well? Spoiler, yes, we do. Several types of spacecraft kept watching the 3 I Atlas in visible light. First of all, of course, Hubble. In July of 2025, it captured one of the best images of the comet, when the comet still stayed far away, at more than 400 million kilometers from Earth. Those Hubble images made it clear that we are really looking at a classic comet with a nucleus and a coma. After that, the Martian fleet joined in. Mission teams pointed the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter at the 3 I Atlas for a while, when the comet flew relatively close to Mars. In those shots, the comet looked like a compact star with a halo. These images confirmed that no large fragments flew near it and also gave astronomers very precise astrometric coordinates. Thanks to these frames, together with ground-based measurements, Astronomers managed to refine the orbit of 3I Atlas by almost one order of magnitude. At the same time, the solar observatories SOHO, STEREO, and the New Punch mission kept an eye on the comet. In their images during September and October, 3I Atlas appears as a faint dot with a tail that changes shape as the comet moves toward perihelion. These spacecraft picked it up exactly at the moment when the comet hid in the solar glare from ground-based telescopes. It might seem that visible light already gives us the full picture. We see the tail, the coma. We estimate the size of the nucleus, and we track the orbit. But space cameras either give very high quality, yet rare frames like Hubble, or frequent but rough, grainy images like SOHO or STEREO. None of these spacecraft carries a powerful optical spectrograph. The large ground-based telescopes, VLT, Gemini, and Keck, changed the situation 